So if you have someone that says, I have chronic fatigue syndrome, and they look normal, so do people with fibromyalgia. They don't, you know, they don't, they don't have, uh, you know, they don't have uh, grotesque rashes, and they, you know, they don't have deformities, and they're not crippled, but they're miserable people. But those with chronic fatigue syndrome suffer from a poor immune function, such that their immune system cannot handle any stress and a normally dormant virus like Epstein-Barr virus or a mycoplasm or um, a uh, cytomegalovirus or one of the herpes viruses, that virus that we normally get, get uh, exposed to in a younger years, chicken pox and mono, and we, we have that, either we, we become contagious or we get it and we get over it. For us in this audience, we're able to go through the rest of our lives with that virus in our bodies. It never gives us any more problems. But those with chronic fatigue syndrome, what happens is their immune system becomes so compromised that this normally dormant virus now starts to raise its ugly head. And when that happens, the body starts to break down. So one of the things I mentioned earlier, I need to pull this up here. One of the things that I mentioned earlier was that uh, with, with, this, with this illness, there is... Uh, There's a whole host of symptoms that go along with that, a laundry list of symptoms. What makes treating these individuals so difficult, both from a, from a, a medical, traditional medical point of view, and even a non-allopathic using clinical nutrition, is that most of the time, if we're not careful, we end up chasing symptoms. And so if you're a medical doctor, that may mean you put them on a non steroidal inflammatory to begin with, and maybe a muscle relaxer, or maybe something to help them to go to sleep, a uh, sleeping pill. Or if you're a non-allopathic physician, maybe you're using things like uh, to, tr to treat the inflammation like Boswellia, or maybe you're using uh, valerium as a natural muscle relaxer. But if you're not careful, what happens is, is this patient walks out of your office with a bag full of stuff. And pretty soon, what happens is, with fibromyalgia patients, they're on an average of 12 prescription medications. Now, what I've found over the years is this. Is, is, and I've been on both sides of the fence, as you heard the propaganda uh, that was talked, you know, that delivered here about what I've done, what I've done the last 15 years. So I've been on both sides of the fence. And um, what I have found is this, is that the less prescription medication the patient is on, fibromyalgia patient, the better they do, the easier it is to get them well. And that's not to say that prescription medications are not useful. They are. They can be very useful. And they oftentimes, when they're used judiciously, are very much appreciated by the patient to, to, to control the symptoms. But now that's all we're doing, though, with that, right? As non-allopathic physicians, if I can switch gears here and talk to those in the audience who are non-allopathic physicians, what you've got to be careful is is you don't fall in the same trap. Because oftentimes I'll have patients come into my office that will be on, you know, 30 bottles of stuff. Their, their, uh, their husbands, you know, not, not, you may not know this, but 95% of all those with fibromyalgia are females. So typically what will happen is the husband will come in my office and we'll have them bring their supplements and their medicines that they're taking. And the husband's got this big bag of stuff. And he looks like a Sherpa, you know, just trying, like, you know, to get in the get in the office. And he's got this bag of stuff that's spilling on the floor. And that literally, they're on 30 bottles of supplements. And the thing about that is this: number one is, as a non-allopathic physician, you've got to get over the obstacle in treating these people that you have something to offer, because they've all tried to take um, noni juice and coral calcium, and maybe that has to be edited, I don't know. And those products are fine, but are they going to make a difference? No. Are they taking something based on the RDA, like Centrum Silver, which as you know is worthless? It's based on the recommended disease allowance, just enough so you don't get scurvy, right? But it's not going to do anything for these people. I mean, these are some of the most challenging biochemical messes you're ever going to run into. And that's why they, even though they've tried all this stuff, they don't notice the difference. The only way to help these people the only way, and it'll take me an hour and a half to explain this, but in one sentence, the only way to help those with fibromyalgia is to get them healthy. That is the only way they can beat the illness. And that's so simplistic, and yet 
That is the only hope they have. And so those individuals who are using integrative medicine as well as non-allopathic physicians, that should be our mantra with these people. It's to get them healthy from the inside out. If we don't do that, we don't stand a chance with these folks. What happens is this. With these individuals, they, well, first of all, we're, we're all born with a stress coping savings account. Some of us have big, large stress coping savings account, and some of us have little stress coping savings account, depending on who we chose as parents. So genetics, right? So based on that, if we look at this, if we look at everyone having a stress coping savings account, if we, if we look at this here, everybody has a stress coping savings account. And in this account, we have certain chemicals that allow us to deal with stress. And we have brain chemicals like serotonin and dopamine, and we have hormones like cortisol and DHEA. And we have thousands and thousands and thousands of chemicals that the body uses every second of every minute of every hour of the day to be able to control and allow the body to work properly. The more stress we get under, the more chemicals we withdraw, the more chemicals we use from this account, right? So. Every time you get under stress, you're making withdrawals from your, your savings account. And what happens with these folks is they make more withdrawals than they do deposits. They bankrupt their stress coping savings account. It could be a long-term illness, and that certainly uh, can be the case with chronic fatigue syndrome. Although a lot of times with chronic fatigue syndrome, they get a flu that and they never get over it. It's the flu from hell, they never get over it. It re-kicks up the mono or uh, Epstein-Barr virus or cytomegalovirus. Or it could be a long-term illness. It could be a surgery. A lot of women have post-hysterectomies come start having problems with fibromyalgia. It could be the loss of a spouse, a loved one. It could be years and years of being in a job that you're miserable in. It could be that uh, you're, a, you're a mother, um, uh, maybe a single mom, and you got small children at home, and you sleep with, you know, how that is, mothers in the audience, you sleep with kind of one eye open, you know, to, to see if your children wake up during the night, and that messes up your sleep, and it's, you know, becomes very stressful. So, at some point, these people bankrupt their stress coping savings account. And typically, fibromyalgia, whether you call it that or not, is really the body's broken down. It cannot handle any more stress. And when that happens, the autonomic nervous system starts to hiccup, starts to have problems. The way that you and I enjoy a life of health is, number one, we don't have to think about it. Our bodies have a homeostatic mechanism, self-regulating ability to where we don't have to think about taking 12 breaths per minute. We don't have to think about pumping blood through 60,000 miles of arteries and veins. We don't have to think about these things. It just happens, right? That's our homeostatic, inborn, innate, and we talked about that in chiropractic, our innate healing ability that does this. For those with fibromyalgia, what happens is, is that autonomic system, the hypothalamus, uh, pituitary adrenals, they start to become dysfunctional. And when that happens, different systems in the body that normally would work together start to work against each other. So. As you know, uh, the hyper, I'm sorry, the autonomic nervous system controls just about every function in the body, from our immune system to our moods to our sleep-wake circadian rhythm to our digestion. And when the autonomic nervous system starts to break down, the different systems in the body start speaking different languages. So the digestive system starts speaking French, the immune system starts speaking German, and pretty soon they're not communicating. And that's what triggers all this host of symptoms that you see in these people. The longer they've had the illness, the more symptoms develop. Now, if you just start trying to cover that up with prescription medication or even uh, nutraceuticals, you're not going to get very far with these folks. 